testing. Hi, everyone. Hi. Good, good, we're awake. Hi, my name is Paul Gavin, and I work for HP, and, and I'm responsible for uh, sales enablement for virtualization and management. Uh, and I'm here today with, with two of my co co-workers. On my right-hand side, I have Jose Betancourt. Uh, how are you? And on my left-hand side, I have Hal Schreiber. And with the exception of me, we have a brain trust up here. Uh, how many people went to, the, um, to the, uh, uh, the Brad Anderson keynote this morning? Good. So I, I, hopefully a lot of you saw the, the server aquarium and the virtual system announcement, virtual system three that we made today. And you heard the Microsoft um, well, private cloud story. You heard how Microsoft was simplifying the private cloud. Well, the goal of this presentation is to show you how HP is simplifying the virtualized hardware infrastructure and integrating that virtualized hardware infrastructure into the Microsoft Private Cloud. We announced the VS3 uh, today, which is what you saw in the lab, and we have a VS3 out in the hands-on lab area that's, that's handling all of the, the, the virtualization. And th this group here is responsible for a lot of that work. And between this group and uh, um, a larger group of people out there, I think we probably spent you know, several hundred and a thousand man hours working with Microsoft on System Center 2012 and our virtual system. And I'll tell you what, it's complicated. There's a lot of work to do, and Microsoft are, are, are simplifying it. But what we want to show you is how the work that we've done will actually help you build your own private cloud based on, based on an HP vir, uh, virtual system. So that, that's, what, that's what we're going to cover. Let me go to the agenda. So we'll, what we'll do is we'll talk a little bit about the, the virtualization market trends. And I'll tell you why we, HP, and I think Microsoft are investing so heavily in this space. Then I'll give you an overview of the virtual system solution for Microsoft. And then what we'll do is we'll have a, a demonstration that, that Hal will give that will show how we have integrated HP Insight Control for System Center with Microsoft System Center 2012 show you those integrations. And the goal of those integrations will be allow you, to allow you to manage an HP virtual system or an HP virtualized infrastructure directly from System Center 2012 consoles, whether that's System Center Virtual Machine Manager or Operation Manager. We'll show you how that integration works and the value proposition that, 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 that we have there. Then what we'll do is we'll, we'll change gears and we'll talk about the work that we've done to simplify the build process for these virtual systems. And Jose and Hal have been working, and they've actually built probably about seven or eight of these virtual systems from scratch. And those systems are now up and running in Microsoft Private Cloud. And we've installed our first system in the Microsoft Technology Center in Irvine. And these guys will share their experience and the work that they've done to make that happen. Then we'll summarize it and we'll tell you where to get more information. So that's the, that's the agenda that, that, we're, that we're going to cover. We'd like, if you could, to keep the questions to the end. If there's really urgent questions, we may take them, but our preference would be to take them at the end. And if, if we run out of time, we will be available this evening. And we have people in the server aquarium and on the HP booth who can handle um, even, even more detailed questions. So, so that's, what the, that's what we're going to cover. And again, thanks very much for attending. So let's, let's start talking about why we're doing this. These are some interesting market trends. Most of them come from IDC. And if you think about it, you know, 4.3% of, of, of the market is looking at the private cloud market is expecting to grow. Between, sorry, 43% the private cloud market is expected to grow between now and 2015. So that's a huge market. If you consider that the server market itself is growing about 5%, then 43% is much bigger. And the, the expected revenue just in hardware for private cloud is like $5.9 billion. That's why we, HP, 
are really interested in working with our customers because you want to help you spend more money on HP hardware. Uh, so then, and then this interesting perspective here about the number of people who are looking at deploying or planning to use a private cloud. You know, it's an interesting uh, thing that we'll, we'll talk about as we go forward. You know, what is a private cloud? We're going to focus on an infrastructure that will allow you to build a private cloud. I think if you ask probably everyone in this room, you'd probably get a slightly definition of what a private cloud was. The goal of this presentation is not to define a private cloud, but to tell you how you can build a real foundation using HP uh, environment for, for, for private cloud. So again, we're, we're, you know, we're looking at a large population who are looking to virtualize. We see a huge value proposition in our virtual system for virtualization. And you'll see as we go through this thing, in one of our systems that will handle perhaps, you know, maybe five or 600 or more virtual machines, the number of internal network connections that you'll have is about 30. That's a huge number of connections that you, have, that you have to configure. So we'll talk about that as we go forward. And last but not least, I'll talk briefly about the IDC pred uh, predictions for 2012. So IDC says that, lastly, that, that 2012 will be VMware's last hurrah, if you will, and that Microsoft will start to overtake this market. So HP as a company are working closely with, with VMware. We'll continue to do that. But we see a tremendous market opportunity in working with Microsoft. And that's why we've invested so much money. So many of you may seen, have seen this slide before. Let, let me just talk about our, our, our value uh, contribution here. We, we were prepared to sell and work with you in terms of buying the components, the servers, the storage, the networking, and the software. And for the last several years, we've had our converged infrastructure. And that has been a simplified way of putting these components together into something that makes it easier for you to get to time to value. And as an IT expert, you want to minimize your effort and maximize your gain. But over the last year or so, we've seen a demand for solutions that are much more developed. And so what we've done is we've developed three different solutions. The virtual system, which is what we'll talk about today. The cloud system, and we have cloud systems in our booth. And then app systems, like the database consolidation appliance that's available in the hands-on lab area. But the focus of this presentation is going to be the work that we're doing with Microsoft on our virtual system. So what is a virtual system? A virtual system covers lots of components. It comes to you as a complete solution, ready to, to be set up and deployed. But underneath, there's HP infrastructure. There's integrated management. There's the Microsoft infrastructure for private cloud. And last but not least, there are services that we have that we'll explain to you that can help you get this thing up and running in a shorter time is five days. So that's the, the, those are the core components. Underneath those components, you know, we say network switches, management nodes, compute nodes, and storage nodes. What we found, as you'll find out, as we drill down into the infrastructure, that you actually, to do this, you require people with specific skills in networking, and virtualized networks like Virtual Connect, and storage like storage area networks and iSCSI networks, and server technology in the Microsoft System Center. And in any corporation, it's difficult to find even a small number of people who have this broad skill set. The idea behind what we've done and what we're doing with these virtual systems is to reduce that risk in your part, you will have to include the storage, the server, the network people, and the software people. But if we can provide you with a solution that's much nearer completion, it means that the time to integrate this into your environment is much shorter. And that's a real value proposition for our virtual systems. Now, Jose is going to drill down into to a lot more detail on our virtual systems. But basically, there are three virtual systems. Virtual system BS1, which is based upon our rack servers, because we realize that not everyone who virtualizes wants to use a Blade server. So we've targeted the market for rack servers, and we have a solution that has two, two rack servers, 
going up to eight rack servers in the management nodes and the storage and the network infrastructure to support that. Moving up into the mid-range, we have our VS2, which is a blade-based technology using iSCSI, which is targeted for those customers who want a, a higher range and want blade technology. In our new system, VS3, which is based a, upon a larger number of blade servers and a three-part uh, SAN technology. And that's what we've been using out in the lab. Uh, we were using this in the lab all week. So that's a high-level overview. Now what I'd like to do is I'd like to hand it over to Jose to talk in detail about these solutions. Thank you, sir. All right. So a little bit of detail on some of the solutions. What you're seeing in the screen is the virtual system one. Basically, as Paul already alluded, this is for the small to mid-sized uh, business. It can also be used in situations where you're a large enterprise and you're looking at perhaps a remote office, small office location. Um, the VS1 and VS2 systems we tend to offer as what we call base or extended systems. What you're seeing there is an illustration of the extended system with all eight servers, management, and so on. But this thing, thing can be as small as two servers. So two DL380s, this can kill up all the way to eight DL380s. It uses P4500 storage, uh, two DL360s for management, which is where system center, inside control for system center would reside and so on. The VS2, which is basically the middle weight unit, um, is based on uh, uh, blade enclosures. So it comes also again in base or extended. The base unit basically was one C7000 enclosure, six um, blades to be used as Hyper-V hosts. And you can see the blades in red and green on the side. Those are storage blades. So what we created was basically a sand in a box. The two units below are basically sand storage in the form of an NDS 600. You take those and combine it with the two storage plates and we're able to create an ice cozy sand internal to the units so you can do both host and guest level clustering with this device. The extended version of the product, which is the one that is illustrated, is with two C7000 enclosures and basically then 12 Hyper-V blades, and with plenty of room to grow for, from the storage perspective, as well as servers and so on. The management nodes will still be the same. One thing that is not illustrated because it's hidden with the panels is both, um, the, the, they have um, three comp switches. So there are four HP networking switches, Two switches are strictly 10 gigabit dedicated for iSCSI traffic. So all your storage traffic is through a dedicated storage network. And we have another two uh, um, switches dedicated to do things such as guest management, cluster share volume, and light migration. Okay, I wanted to show a little bit more about the P4800 because it, it is an interesting solution for that mid-size for development and test environments in the enterprise as well. It basically leverages the existing C7000 chassis. So you basically, what you do is you add two storage plates. Those plates you don't need to touch. You basically, you purchase um, with, with the P4800, and you, but you basically get is a P4800 and the storage enclosure that you see below with the 70 drives. What it does is it creates first a level of, um, let me see if I check. Okay, let me show it, okay. So basically what we have here is the full illustration of the, how the P4800 works. First, it creates a level of hardware rate. Basically, half of the enclosure can be mirrored against the other half of the enclosure. And then on top of that, you, or you can create a rate five set or a rate six set. And then on top of that, you create software rate or what we call network rate. The way this is connected is on the back of the C7000 enclosure, there is a three gigabit SAS switch. And in the case of virtual system, redundancy is the operative word. So there's two of everything. There's two flex tens, there's two three gig switches, and so on. And you can see the enclosure is two sets of 35 drives. If you were to expand and get a second unit, you can continue doing RAID across both units. And you would leverage the existing three gig SAS switches. You just add another enclosure and you move on. This is the new guy, or the new kid on the block, the virtual system three for Microsoft. 
what you see in the server aquarium, call it like a sneak preview, because realistically, the VS3 is based on generation or Gen A technology, and it will be generally available in June. What we did in the server aquarium is we basically built a G7 version of VS3. If you have done hands-up labs today, if you have used any piece of equipment there to, throughout the last couple of days, you've been using the VS3. Um, I believe I talked to our senior expert over there. At some point, we we're running about 32, 3300 virtual machines currently. The other important tidbit of information, when you guys switch between hands-on labs, we have eight minutes here to basically redo 4,000 virtual machines. So that gives you an idea of the capabilities of the VS3 system. In eight minutes, we take 4,000 VMs and we reprovision them and we're good to go. The VS3, it's not a solution in the sense of the VS1 or 2 that came in flavors of base or extended. It's a solution. It is virtualization and private cloud for grown-ups. And as such, grown-ups understand that decisions need to be made, architectural considerations are taken in mind, and this includes a services from HP Technical Services Division, where they will meet with you and they will identify your requirements, and based on that, the VS3 may change shape. Okay, a little bit of paid political announcement of our new generation eight uh, servers. There's a couple of interesting features that uh, I like to bring up. One is what we call agentless management. So if you come from an HP shop, a lot of the agents that you currently install in the OS to provide management are gone. They're now part of ILO. So if you're used to Smart Start, for example, Smart Start is now integrated into the ILO. So we have moved to what we call agentless management. If your existing infrastructure, if you have built your practices with agents and you still want to use them, they're there. But if you have moved to Gen 8 and you want to start taking advantage of agentless management, it's there as well. Um, in addition to that, we have what we call Smart Update Manager 5.0. Um, it simplifies the collection of updates, and better yet, it's integrated into System Center Configuration, configuration Manager. It's integrated today into SCCM 2007. It'll be integrated later in the year on SCVMN 2012. And a series of improvements in Gen 8, obviously, in sensors, basically reporting, uh, providing higher level digital of reporting for hardware, platinum power supplies. Depending on the size of your environment and your shop, this is a big deal. A lot of agencies out there actually still measure power. If you happen to work for a government agency that does something let's just say that they can't move the data center for security reasons, and they're based in like Fort Meade or Langley, Virginia. Tell you what, that next server could cost you a data center. So for them, management power is a serious business, and we work with customers like that to develop this level of power supplies, additional level of sensor reporting to be able to provide just the necessary power to run the infrastructure. And we have taken some of that intelligence all the way to Iraq. The virtual systems have what they call IPDUs, so they provide, the rack itself can provide data back in terms of how much power is it consuming the external temperatures, and with some other software, we can control things such as, okay, maybe at these hours of the night, we want to run at a lower throttle speed and let the CPUs run at a slower speed because maybe all we're doing is backups, okay? Um, one thing that we learned from our personal experience trying to build these virtual systems. At the end of the day, what is our secret sauce? Our secret sauce is really four big things. One is what we call Virtual Connect. Virtual Connect basically allows you to abstract the network at the firmware level. So imagine now that you have your Blade server, and your Blade server has two 10 gigabit cards. At the firmware level, the way we can abstract it with virtual, with, uh, with flex, uh, virtual connect, you basically get eight connections. You can set up the speed of them and you can modify the throughput of those guys. 
So if you're running in a Hyper-V environment, you can have your management A, management B, guest A, guest B, ISCO CA, ISCO CB, cluster share volume, and light migrate, all isolated from that perspective. On the other side of the Virtual Connect, what we provide is the ability to aggregate ports. So if 10 gigabits for a particular function is not good enough, we can aggregate, we can create, create a 20 gigabit trunk. If you need to, and we also support VLAN tunneling or, or mapping. On the network side, which is what you see with two tier with HPIRF, when HP acquires 3Com, it acquires some interesting technologies. IRF allows us to take two of our switches and logically see them as one. So it provides one complete mesh and one simplified point of management. This is what I was talking about, virtual connect. So in a traditional switching solution, you would need 40 connections to run your standard blade infrastructure. If you're using Flex 10 and traditional Flex Fabric, we can bring that, that to 20 connections. If you're using the full flex fabric, we can bring that to, the, to two ports. Okay. Um, a little bit about three part. It's fast, it's efficient, it has a lot of features in terms of thin provisioning. It has the, um, it's, it's a storage infrastructure built for the cloud and built for services providers in mind. So you can leverage a lot of those features in your enterprise. It's shared, it's secure, and it's resilient. The important thing that I like to show there is the multi-tenancy. So you have the concept of a virtual private array within the array. So you can create islands of storage and isolate them and have the proper security levels and assign those to uh, groups. The other interesting thing that I like about the three part, which is something to take into account when you do your VS3 is, you can have multiple levels of storage there. You can have a three part that has SSD, SAS, and SATA all within the same array. And you can, cre you can create some nice solutions that try to address your computing requirements. Okay, it's thin, so basically storage is provided on demand. You, I, you know, if you create a big LUN, but you're only using a portion of it, well, we create the portion. We'll grow it when we need it. It's optimized, it stripes across storage tiers, and it stripes across trays inside the three part. And it's power and cool efficient. Okay, a little bit about the VS2. So the big thing is the left hand storage solution. So I already talked about the P4800 and the VS1 is the P4500 storage array. One of the things that it has is our left hand software, which we acquired a number of years ago. What that allows us is to provide a lot of SAN capabilities via software. So we can create the stripe sets, we provide snapshots, volume replication, all of that at a very affordable level. Um, the other big component is obviously inside control for system center. Hal is gonna go into more details when showing its integration with to, into system center 2012. It is available today for 2007 at, at, at SCVMN 2008. And what we provide is a number of management packs for SCVMM, for SCCM, and for SCOM. More um, Hal will have more details on the 2012 portion, but basically what we try to provide is additional analytics for your environment. So when you are, if you're using SCOM and you want more detail on your hardware, we'll provide that via our SCOM management pack. In the future, we'll have the performance, the PRO is what you see is performance resource optimization. So imagine a situation where you have a specifically a blade that's running hot. You could have a number of rules that say, well, if it's running hot in terms of performance, take this number of virtual machines and move them somewhere else, okay? And we provided additional capabilities to simplify and to optimize uh, server OS deployment. Factory Express. Not sexy, but it's important. I don't know how many of you guys have tried to rack your own servers and cable them. I can tell you, it's ugly, okay? My word of advice, before I came to HP, I probably did your job for 16 years. Leave it to the experts. Let them wire it for you. Configure it. You really don't want to be trying to figure out a mesh of cables at two in the morning. Let them do it for you. They know what they're doing. and. They get paid to do that, so just. 
Okay. And last but not least, we provide technical services as part of the installation of a virtual system. If you purchase a virtual system, it includes an HP technical services person to come on site, to work with you for the last leg of the installation. From Factory Express, the infrastructure comes configured in the sense that Virtual Connect has been tested, all the wires are in place, and we know that all the components work because we actually tested at the factory. What the technical services guy will come is work with your team, address what needs to be done. They can install Windows if you want him to do it. They can install System Center if you want them to do it. They will set up the high availability infrastructure for the management servers. They'll integrate it into Active Domain Directory if that's necessary. Again, they will work for you. It's an engagement of approximately five days, but it's built into the virtual system. So don't think that it's a, a separate engagement. This is applicable for VS1, for VS2. VS3, again, being the cloud for grown-ups, and being that it has different, different possibilities in terms of how it's built, the technical services engagement there will be basically a custom statement of work based on your needs. Okay. Um, I'm gonna give the control back to Paul. He's gonna talk about some complementary services available and then Hal is going to do the demonstration. Okay, thank you, thank you, Jose. Just a, just a couple of things, I, I, I thought that was a really good overview. If I can relate what Jose said to what Microsoft said this morning, he talked about networking. Now, Microsoft saying that they can discover networks. When you consider, if you build a Microsoft Hyper-V environment, you want those networks to be highly available, you want them to be dense. Using these technologies, inside a virtual system, we can make that high availability and that denseness transparent to Microsoft System Center 2012. This morning, Microsoft spoke about storage and we've been able to create pools of storage with, with, with Windows Server 2012. How just described with 3PAR, how we can, he can, we can create those, those levels of storage underneath that and make Microsoft's integration even more seamless. And we talked about integrated management, where we can integrate Microsoft System Center and our HP Insight Control. These intersection points are what are really important. So let me talk a little bit here. You know, we talk, we've talked a lot right now about virtualization. We've talked a lot about how we can get you to a virtualized environment. But many of you here are, are listening to Microsoft and saying, Hey, it's the cloud. We want to get to the cloud. Now, I've spoken to a lot of customers, and people want to get to the cloud, but they don't really know what a cloud is. We have a set of services that will actually help those. And starting on the left here with a transform transformation experience workshop. The goal of that workshop is actually technology independent, but it's designed to talk about what a private cloud might mean and how you might want to get there. And then we have a whole gamut of services for helping you deploy that. And then we actually have services for exchange for private cloud. So we have a full set of complementary services um, to, to get you to a private cloud. So that's HP's value add. What I'd like to do is, is kind of talk a little bit now in the virtualization side. And you've all got some white papers there. And here's why. These virtual systems are designed to work with multiple workloads. But many people have said to us, you know what? Hey, how will that work in my real life? I don't want to virtualize for the sake of virtualization. Well, I want, I want to get, I want to consolidate, yeah. But if I consolidate, if I'm consolidating Exchange or SharePoint, or like all these hands-on labs that are running here, what does that consolidation ratio look like? How could I measure what size of system to buy based on a specific workload? So, the, so one of the white papers you've got here is an ESG lab workload that will actually help you do that. And this is an example of, an, of, of a virtualized exchange workload where we've actually done the testing and given you the, 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 the virtualized exchange environment. And again, we've also done a SharePoint performance data. Now, that SharePoint um, file will, will be available soon. But again, the goal here is to give you enough information to go back to your environment and size a virtu virtual system against a very specific workload. So that's the goal of those white papers. 
So again, we've talked about virtualization, we've talked about virtual system, we've talked about workloads and services. Let's now can, can I change direction and talk a little bit about the private cloud. So that this is a, an HP private cloud strategy. So let's, I talked about we can start with a, with a bundle of comp, uh, the components with HP Blade System and Proliance and Microsoft. Or then we can migrate to an HP virtual system solution for Microsoft. Again, it's designed to get you up and running quickly. Now, today we've heard all about the Microsoft private cloud. And an HP virtual system solution for Microsoft is designed specifically to allow you to make that journey to a Microsoft private cloud faster, more easily, and less expensively. HP also has HP cloud system. And the difference there would be if you're looking at a heterogeneous environment that may include Unix or HP UX, Linux, Windows, and is a heterogeneous environment, an HP cloud system is built to manage that HP UX, Linux, and Windows environment. A cloud system can manage an HP Microsoft private cloud, or you could choose to have independent uh, solutions. But we have a complete portfolio of products, and if you're 90%, 80%, 70% Microsoft, and you want a Microsoft private cloud, we'll support that. But we also support HP cloud system. So that's an overall positioning. And in summary, on the virtual system, it really is designed to get you up and running quickly. You know, we talk, I'll talk a little bit about Cisco and UCS and B-Block, and when, we, when, when Cisco brought that out, people say, well, this is a, we know what it will do. We believe now that we have a stronger integrated portfolio with Microsoft, and we know what it will do, and we have the data to support you and help you build this thing with confidence. So let's talk, this is a busy slide, but let me try and explain the, this slide. Microsoft have a, to uh, have a program called the Microsoft Private Cloud Immersion Program. And basically, at a high level, it's about configuring and deploying a private cloud, which is what you saw this morning. And then it's about monitoring and operating a private cloud. And we actually have three intersection points that provides the glue between our infrastructure and the Microsoft Private Cloud. And then the configure and deploy intersection point we will show you, or have will show you in a few minutes, how we integrate with System Center Virtual Machine Manager and how we do a bare metal deployment of an HP Blade server in that environment. Then with Microsoft Private Cloud, you can do the rest of these components that once you've got it up and running, you want to be able to monitor that. And what's the Microsoft tool for monitoring? SCOM. Someone else knows what I'm talking about too, great. So it's SCOM. So we have SCOM. And we'll show you the integration that we have with SCOM. And what that integration is designed to do is to allow SCOM to completely manage or monitor that HP environment without having to leave the SCOM console. And people like that because it saves money. You can train people in SCOM, and they don't have to go in and go into insight control and do these things. It's all from one console. Once you've deployed and you're monitoring, you want to be able to control. Now, Microsoft showed this morning that if, uh, if, if there's extra load in a, in a private cloud environment, then Microsoft System Center Virtual Machine Manager can go and deploy additional physical machines into that environment. Let's say, and this never happens, but sometimes HP machines might fail. With our ProTip integration, you can catch a failure before it occurs. So, so let's say there's excessive memory errors, or there's a DIMM failure, or an appending uh, fan failure. With our pro tip for SCVMM, you can actually take the virtual machines that are running on that physical server and dynamically move them onto another physical server within a Microsoft private cloud. Unplug that Blade server, plug in a new one, and then System Center Virtual Machine Manager will automatically, automatically allocate those virtual machines on those different servers. That's really powerful, and it's really integrated. And we have it as part of our insight control. So you can see that we've got this. And you can see here that the, the ProTip one is something we've had with 2008. And unfortunately, when, with 2012, some things broke. But we're fixing that, and we're hoping to have that available in, in a very short time frame. So we're going to show you that 
but it's kind of a technology preview because we haven't we haven't got it today. But we believe that when people start using System Center 2012 uh, Pro Tips, we have that. So that's a an overview and an insight and a setup for how <laughs> now to talk about give you dive into some detail and show you how that works. Thanks, Paul. Uh, so my name is Hal. Uh, yes, I could be hardware abstract layer, if you wish, or HAL 9000 for Stanley Kubrick fans. Uh, I'm going to get rid of this and bring up my demos. Come out. Okay. Uh, let me see that all right. Um, uh, my name is Hal Shriver. I'm part of Infrastructure to Applications uh, within HP. And uh, what we, uh, Jose, my other counterpart who stepped away for a moment, uh, are responsible for is delivering uh, Microsoft technologies onto HP hardware. Uh, and what I'm going to do is walk you through three quick flash demos. Uh, they're about uh, four or five minutes each. Um, these uh, demos or flash videos are going to be highlighting uh, several components and features related to Insight Control for System Center. So uh, the value add that HP brings through Insight Control for System Center. The first one is going to be related to SCOM uh, and uh, the uh, uh, management packs that are associated with SCOM. Uh, the second one will be SCVMM and the integration kit uh, related to OS deployment. And the final one, as Paul mentioned last, was uh, going to be related to HP ProLiant Pro management pack. So without further ado, let me start this guy. So what we're looking at here is the SCOM console. And just pause this real quick. Uh, HP provides uh, a wide variety of management packs for uh, Insight Control for System Center. And you'll notice the uh, extensive hierarchy on the left-hand side there uh, with all of the uh, management and monitoring capabilities uh, within SCOM. Uh, well, what we're going to focus on is the HP systems. Uh, and specifically, we have highlighted here the Windows server state. Uh, under that uh, tab, all of our, uh, well, we have four systems in our demo here, two blades and two DLs. Uh, you can get a roll up uh, quick view into the health of each of those, uh, the health state of each of those. There's an active alerts tab. Here is a master roll up of all your critical and warning alerts for all of your HP systems that reside there. Uh, at, you click on one of these, you're going to get quite a bit of uh, uh, information and knowledge uh, related to the cause uh, of that particular event. Um, next, uh, we have a group diagram. And as we bring that up here and resize it for you a little bit, um, this is a graphical representation of uh, everything that is in our environment. So our blade system enclosures, as well as our ProLiant rack-based servers as well, you can drill down into these all the way to the component level and take a temperature on the current health status of those components for each of those systems. Uh, OK, next we are, uh, OK, so there is also a few other management packs here. As we mentioned earlier, we have the ability to uh, monitor agentless uh, servers, as well as our blade system enclosures, uh, Linux, VMware, and of course, Windows boxes. Um, we are going to take a closer look here at our, our blade system enclosure and specifically the enclosure state. This is similar to the server state that we looked at earlier, and you're able to get a quick uh, read on the health of that enclosure. Uh, the diagram, again, is another graphical representation of our enclosures. And as we drill down into it, uh, we can go all the way down to the component level again, so the interconnect bays, the OA, the power subsystems, uh, and the device bays. As an example, we'll drill down into the interconnect bay here. Uh, and on bay one, uh, you'll see that everything is, is healthy, nice and healthy. Uh, and I believe we have a gigabit Ethernet blade switch in there. And that guy is reading as healthy. Uh, next, we'll take a closer look at the uh, Windows server view. Uh, and again, we'll take a look at the group diagram, resizing that a bit for you. And I think on the far left here, we have our ProLiant blades. Yeah. So let's open that up and drill down. Uh, we have a couple nodes uh, in that enclosure. Uh, as we drill down here and into these various uh, directories, we have subfolders that are just uh, organizational alphabetically in this case. 
uh, of all of our components. And you can re get a read and gauge on the health of those individual components. Uh, also within the Windows servers view, uh, we have our active alerts tab, again, a master rollup of all of our uh, critical and warning alerts for that uh, uh, subsystem. Uh, server state, this is interesting. This uh, is actually very useful. So uh, as we select Blade 1 here, for our example, you notice in the right bottom corner there, we have some context-sensitive links. Uh, and from here, we are able to, from the SCOM console, launch an ILO session of that particular blade uh, the uh, system management homepage, uh, or even a RDP session. Uh, for our demo here, we're going to launch ILO. It's our login screen. We'll be able to log in here. Just a moment. And this is, again, the actual ILO console for that blade from the SCOM uh, management console itself. So a single pane of glass management and capability. Uh, you're able to perform any activity or task that you would expect uh, in ILO. So as we log out here, uh, I'm going to show you one final management pack, which is related to our storage. So our HP storage management pack, we just open that up a little bit there. Again, at the top, we have a master rollup of alerts, errors, and events for all of the storage sub subsystems that uh, we are monitoring in this environment. For our demo purpose, we're, we uh, are running a P4000, so we'll use that as an example. If we take one of our alerts uh, and highlight this guy, uh, there's just a wealth of, of information and knowledge related to that particular event or warning uh, in, the, in the lower right-hand pane. So I think that's all for this guy. Uh, no, I have one more. D diagram view. Okay, so again, the graphical representation of the storage system. Uh, we have a single cluster with a couple nodes in it. Again, you can uh, drill down into the uh, individual components here and take a reading on the, on the health of those as such. Again, a detailed view with some pertinent uh, information related to that particular node. Get the next one up here. OK. So next, we're going to be taking a look at the SCVMM 2012 console. And specifically, uh, we've landed on the uh, library uh, settings tab for this. Uh, I'd like to bring your attention to the, the HP folder that is uh, underneath it here. Did I start that? Yep. Uh, and the HP folder is created with the SCVMM uh, integration kit. Now, what this provides for is uh, a bunch of server, I'm sorry, uh, driver packages uh, specifically related to ProLiant servers and Windows Server 2008 R2. Um, we'll take just one of them here and, as an example, take this first guy and we'll go into the properties screen for him. Now, you'll notice there's a custom tags. Uh, section here. Now what this is used for is to uh, tag this particular driver package for a specific OS deployment. Uh, you can use your um, uh, plug and play driver IDs if you wish uh, or the custom tags like we're doing for our demo here. Uh, in this case uh, it's our WinPE uh, 30 uh, uh, tag for our driver package. Okay, uh, next we're going to take a look at the Profiles tab, and we have a custom profile that we created here, a bare metal OS deploy on a ProLiant server. Now there's a couple parameters here that are of note. Uh, one is the VHD file, which is used to deploy the uh, actual OS, uh, and again, there's the driver filtering and the tags that we just talked about, uh, and if you wish, you can again use the uh, plug and play IDs instead. Next, we're going to switch over to the uh, VMs and uh, services section here. And just as a quick little level set, we've got uh, a single Hyper-V cluster with a couple blades, as well as a couple DLs. And in this demo, we're going to be uh, adding a, a third blade, so a blade number three. Uh, next, we'll switch to the fabric 
tab, and then the add resources wizard. We're going to add a Hyper-V host and cluster. And here's our little wizard popping up. We have to let it know that it's a physical computer that's being provisioned. Next, we have to give it a run as account. Now, the run as account is needed to uh, communicate with the baseboard management controller. And in our case, that is ILO. Uh, and so what we've done is we've created an ILO account. And we'll select that guy here in a moment. We'll browse to him and grab him real quick. There we go. Come on. There's our ILO account. So we'll bring that guy up. And uh, what he is used for is to transfer uh, IPMI commands from SCVMM to ILO itself. Uh, next, we need to give it a physical address of uh, ILO itself. And in our case, for our demo, there's just a single computer, so we'll keep it simple and throw that uh, IP in there. You can, if you have a subnet uh, or an IP range, uh, throw those in uh, in addition. Uh, next, we need to give it a host group. In this case, we're just using the default all hosts. Uh, we also have to let it know uh, if it's leveraging DHCP to grab IP and network settings, uh, or you can use static IPing. Uh, in our case, uh, because our host profile has been configured to use DHCP, uh, that's what we're doing in this case. Next, we'll give this guy a name, and uh, Blade 3 will be the next in our sequence. We'll check this little box to skip the Active Directory, check for the computer name. Click Next to our summary screen, make sure everything's OK, and click Finish. Now, this will pop up our job screen. Uh, now, this job has quite a few sub-jobs associated with it. And as we move this up here to, for better viewing, uh, in, in the lower right there is all the sub-jobs related to our master job. Uh, you, you can see that currently we're waiting for the physical machine, the Pixie Boot. We've powered him on. We've prepped him. Uh, we prepped the physical machine uh, with respect to uh, all the information that, and configuration that's needed. Uh, and what we're going to do is, since this process takes about 25 minutes, we'll switch over to the uh, ILO screen and, and watch this guy boot. So as he's booting, we should see the WinPE environment pop up momentarily. There he goes. Uh, and then SCVMM is uh, registering this guy and starting the uh, physical OS deployment process. So as he's going there, there's uh, quite a few other steps that are going to happen here. So we'll skip ahead. Here we're configuring the disk. Next, we should transfer the VHD, uh, which is going to uh, be our, our OS image that we're deploying. And that guy takes a little bit of time, so we just skipped ahead. Uh, after the transfer of the VHD, we should be transferring our matching drivers based on our custom tag that we put in our host profile earlier. So after that guy is through transferring, uh, he should then be ready to inject those drivers into the OS deployment itself. So there he goes, injecting his drivers. Uh, finally, we should uh, be configuring the uh, Hyper-V role or enabling that role for that particular host. Uh, with a little bit of cleanup here, we should have a final reboot. There's our reboot. When that guy comes back online, we should be able to uh, log in. And as you notice, we're logging into blade number three. And we'll switch back over to the VMM screen here in a moment and see that we have indeed added our third blade host there, available to uh, be put into a cluster of his own or uh, an existing cluster. So I got one final video here for you. Okay, start him up. So this one is uh, related to our ProLiant Pro uh, management pack itself. And uh, just as an FYI, this is a technology preview. So this is not a final product. Uh, it's going to be shipping later this year. We're just relate, uh, waiting on some information or answers from Microsoft before we do that. So let me start this guy back up here. Uh, you will notice uh, that we're looking at the SCOM 2012 console, and there's the HP ProLiant Pro Management Pack folder there with a couple subfolders, Active Alerts and HP Managed Hosts. Uh, we're currently selecting Active Alerts, and uh, there is a, a Pro Alert that exists for Blade Number 1. And what this is is a physical drive predictive failure. Paul was talking about this a moment ago. 
uh, and uh, there's quite a bit of information related to it, summary cause, resolution, and so forth. Uh, what this is, or what this means, is not that a drive has failed yet, but that uh, it has been predicted to fail through the, uh, an event that has bubbled up through the HP uh, Insight Management Agent that resides on that host. Uh, so again, it's just a predictive failure. Let me start this guy again here so we can move right along. Uh, if we select the HP Manage Host tab, uh, indeed we see that Blade 1 has a critical, or is in a critical state, so there's something going on there. We're gonna switch over to the SCVMM console, and uh, you'll notice that we have a single Hyper-V cluster with a couple blades in him, uh, and a couple DLs there as well. Uh, blade number one is, or host one, Blade 1, is running a single VM, VM1-WS2008R2, and blade number two has VM two and three, respectively. So next we'll switch back over to blade one and we'll click our pro tips window. And we'll see that a pro tip has indeed been forwarded from SCOM to SCVMM. Here it is. Uh, and there's uh, cause and resolution for that particular pro tip or, or pro alert uh, with some additional information. Now, uh, Pro allows for uh, the migration or the automatic migration of this particular VM to a second host in, in our cluster. Uh, so uh, the way you do that is by clicking the implement button in the lower right, and, and it talks about how uh, VM1, uh, there in the middle of the screen, if you follow our little cursor in a moment, uh, is going to be migrated to Blade 2. So let's watch that happen as we, we click the implement button here in a moment. After we do that, it should momentarily switch to the job screen after it has initialized. So you see it's gone into the initialized state. So it's uh, initializing the migration of that VM over to the other host. Here's our job screen. So you can see that the job has actually started and it's implementing the fix uh, for the pro tip. After a few moments here, it should complete, there it goes. I see that it's moved the virtual machine and that it has successfully completed the pro tip. Uh, and I'll switch back to the VMM console here in a moment after everything goes green. And you'll see that blade number one, or our first host, no longer has a VM running in it. And that guy has actually moved on over to blade number two and I'll, you know, living with his with those brothers there, all three of them are residing on that blade. At this point, as Paul mentioned earlier, uh, this is where you could power down that particular blade uh, in your enclosure and swap it out with a new one. And then you're up and ready to go again. All right, that's all I've got. Bring this back up for you. Wow, that, that, was, that was impressive. All of the things that you saw there, were all HP value-added components and all integrated not just with SCVMM 2008 but, but with SCVMM 2012. So we've been working hard with Microsoft to get to this point. Can you put it into view mode? There you go. Okay. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to hand it back to Jose. And for this, for this part of the, 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 the presentation, Jose's going to share with you some of the learnings that they've, that they've had as they've built all these virtual systems. Can you hear me? Okay. Here, I need a clicker. Thank you. All right. Um, earlier, we were talking about the virtual systems. These are diagrams from Factory Express. So this is the creature in details. So you can see the front view of the VS2 base. The two DL360s on top are the System Center 2012 host. So they are running in a high availability cluster. And its main purpose is life is just one thing. Host System Center 2012 and host inside control for System Center. The enclosure basically host right now, this is a base system. 
the six Hyper-V blades that will be running all your virtual machines. And the two blades in green are the, P4, uh, the storage blades that kind of comprise the whole P4800. So the P4800 will be the two storage blades, the MDX600 tray that's in green. And then if you look at the back of the C7000, you'll see that in the middle, there's something they say, two, three gig SAS modules. So basically the way the cabling works is, let me see, do we have the diagram? No. Well, all right, I'll go. Um, from the back of the, of the MDS 600, there will be a SCSI cable that connects to the three gig SAS module. That module is seen by the two P4800 blades. Those blades, in turn, then create a nice cozy target that they present to the rest of the blades in the enclosure. In the setup, the way we currently do is we're able to create um, a volume group and storage group, and we're able to present that ISCOSI storage not only to the Hyper-V blades here, but we actually borrow some of the storage to create the disk groups to host System Center 2012 on the DL360. So don't think of it as it's enclosed and it's only strictly allotted to that enclosure. If you have excess capacity here, as long as it's part of the whole ISCOSI network, you could take the storage and allocate it to other devices. And then last but not least, on the top, you see the 5800 switches. So we carry two A5800, as I mentioned before, and I think what's not shown here is two A5820s for the ISCOSI traffic. Okay. okay, I was talking about virtual connect and server profiles. So this is uh, basically an illustration of how uh, virtual connect works. So we take the 10 gigabit connection and using what we call a server profile, we're able to create the management, guest, ISCOSI, cluster share volumes, and so on. And then because we have two virtual connect ports, we're able to create the necessary layer of redundancy. So if you lose one entire virtual connect, the entire workload can be sustained by the second virtual connect um, interconnect device. Okay. Remember when I told you leave uh, the cabling to the expert? That's what I mean. Um, all this cabling is actually put together at Factory Express. The colors is just uh, instructions for the gas at Factory Express to say which one goes where. So for example, at a high level, the green cables are management. So that's your onboard administrator. The yellow cables, I believe, are for uh, another layer of management. The red cables is ISCOSI, and so on. So each of the different networks has a different type of wiring, and we do that for you as part of the whole Factory Express. Um, note, one of the other things that we can do with Virtual Connect is we can create a network that stays inside the enclosure. So inside the enclosure, the cluster sh uh, share volume and light migrate, there's not an actual cable going to the outside. We just created the network internally. Okay? This is the same network now with an extended system. So again, looking at that complexity, this is work that you would do if you choose not to use Factory Express, but to do this yourself. You know what? You're an IT administrator. You got better things to do. Let someone else do this for you. Okay. Um, these are some of the Factory Express tasks. So it's a, an explanation of how the process works. The bottom line is they build the entire solution for you from a physical perspective. They will do all the configuration. They will do all the wiring. They will even go to the extent that they will install windows on every blade. It will not be there by the time you get it, but they will do the installation and test to make sure that every component is configured per spec. So they're able to see that they install a Windows 2008 R2 SP1 data center, and I'm able to see all the eight networks that I have to see. They want to confirm that Virtual Connect is set up the right way. They want to confirm that the P4800 is properly configured. The license key has been applied, et cetera. Okay. What you're seeing here is just, uh, these are four PowerShell scripts. Um, it's what Factory Express uses. So we have gone and automated a lot of these tasks. 
And if you want to meet the guy who actually wrote all these scripts, he's in the server query. His name is Don Juan Quack. Go see him. He can tell you everything you ever needed to know about PowerShell. By the same token, if you stop by the HP booth back on the other side, there's another gentleman called Doug the Word. Doug is the person responsible for inside control for System Center. So if you have any follow-on questions, this is your opportunity. You can talk straight to the source. Okay. For example, this is the OA script that sets up the onboard administrator. So this is a, it's a combination of PowerShell script and command instructions that are submitted to the onboard administrator on the frame. Some of the other work that we have done is we have taken into account some of the smarts that are required to power up the right sequence for power up. So we know that when, if you start this enclosure from a power failure for whatever reason, there has to be a timing from the time the MDS 600 tray comes up because you have to power up, let all the spindles come up, power up the switch, the three gig switch. We know that the three gig switch has to come up before the virtual connect. So notice the, the gap in timing. And then last but not least, then we power up the blade. So we did all that work for you. We already figured the timing. So same thing for Virtual Connect. This is just showing some of the work that Factory Express and Engineering have done behind. They already pre-configured. They thought about everything that has to be done. There are scripts to configure Virtual Connect, and when it's completed, you, the end result is this is a Virtual Connect manager, and you're seeing the setup. If you have a red, it means you probably don't have a cable properly connected. Okay. Then last but not least, we have technical services consulting, which will do that last leg if you choose to do so. This is when they will come, grab the 2DL360s, install System Center 2012, install Inside Control for System Center, and create this basic infrastructure to set up that base, and then you can take it from there. Um, when the technical services consultant arrives on site, you have the opportunity to talk with them and you know, if there are changes associated to your environment, that's the time when you can talk to them and make the appropriate changes. Okay? They will install server 2008 R2 SP1 and create the Hyper-V cluster. They will set up the P4800, so they create two cluster share volumes. Actually, they create a, a, a more complex structure, as well as the necessary witnesses for failover. Okay. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for for listening. I think the goal here was was to talk about all of the HP value add that we're adding in here. You know, we talked about you know the the, the management integrations. we have talking about pre-building this thing for you. We've talked about the complexity, and it's really it's a Microsoft Hyper-V complexity in the sense that you have to build this entire environment, and we've tried to do this all for you. Again, it supports Microsoft Private Cloud. We're introducing our HP Gen 8 servers and our three-power storage that really broadens out the scale from, uh, to support you know, you know, over, over thousands of, of, of virtual machines. Here, we have over 2,000 virtual machines. So we've got something that we think scales uh, almost exponentially up in, into to the enterprise. So that's, that's the summary. So just last but not least, you get these, these slides, and here, here is a list of key areas that you want to go to to get additional technical information. And then please go to the hands-on lab area and talk to Dong and talk to, to Doug Duard, because they're, they're experts. You can see here that, that there's going to be over 650 lab, um, labs that are run this week, um, hands-on labs and structural la la labs. And as uh, Jose mentioned, we've got eight minutes to refresh that with our storage. And if you go to labs and they're working, you know that our virtual system three is working. And this is the environment, and we've 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 going to describe this, so I won't go over it again. So uh, some additional things: we're actually running some focus group this week. If if you're a partner, um, we we're looking for ways that we can work together with partners to develop new business opportunities. And if you're a service provider, how can we work together with you as a service provider? Um, and those are, where, those are where the groups have been running, and those are the times. In addition, we have a, we have a three-power session where we're drilling down into a lot more detail on the three-power storage 
and we, we talked about some of the key aspects of that. We've provided some free white papers. Please come by the HP booth and take the hands-on labs. Actually, the, the white paper is actually pretty decent. If you really take the opportunity to go through this, this is the same instructions that Dong, actually Dong wrote this white paper. So this is the step-by-step -step of how to take a virtual system and complete your own virtual private cloud. He's got through all the implementation details for the server, for the P4800, for um, network configuration utility, as you know, on Windows 2008, if you do any teaming, you still have to use the, the teaming software from the partner. All the work that went into creating that is in this document. So it's a great reference document. I suggest you take the time and go through it. OK, so with, with that, thank you for those who lasted all the time with us. I appreciate, I appreciate or we appreciate uh, you listening to us. We, we believe we've put a lot of effort in from an HP perspective to make this easier for you to do. So whether you decide to do it yourself, we're providing information to make it easier, or whether you decide to pick a virtual system, we know we can do that for you. But last but not least, we're committed with Microsoft to the private cloud, and we're committed to your success. So again, thank you very much, everyone.